Hello everyone, welcome back to Azure Fundamentals course. This is Adam and in episode 10, we're covering the basics of Azure networking services. Stay tuned. The focus of the 10th episode is around Azure networking services. And the core services that we will learn today are virtual networks, load balancers, VPN gateways, application gateways, and content delivery networks. But before we move to those services, let's talk about what are networking services in general. This is the category of services that allows customers to connect their on-premise and cloud resources, but also help with protection and monitoring of the networking for those services, as well as helping customers with application delivery. And the first service that we will learn about today is Azure Virtual Network. Imagine you have two resources in Azure, let's say two virtual machines. Because virtual machines are representation of the physical hardware in the cloud, they also need to be placed into representation of the physical network infrastructure. That representation in Azure is called Azure Virtual Network. Virtual networks allow their customers to create, manage, monitor, and secure connectivity between Azure resources, but also between Azure resources and their on-premise environments. Virtual networks can be segmented into smaller pieces called subnets. There are two main purposes for having subnets. One is to allow customers to manage their IP address allocation in a more efficient manner, but also to group related resources together so that you can apply filters and security rules across multiple resources within the same subnet. For example, by grouping all the resources hosting your web applications and only allowing web traffic to go to that subnet. As a customer, you have a freedom of how you manage subnets and virtual networks. If you want, you can group multiple resources within the same subnet, and it is your choice how you want to represent your networking infrastructure in the cloud. There are many reasons why you would want to have multiple virtual networks and many technical limitations forcing you to do that. For example, virtual network can only reside within a single region and span resources from that specific region. So if you will be building multi-region applications, you will end up with multiple virtual networks. So if you will want to connect multiple virtual networks, you can do one of two things. You can either use a feature called VNet peering. VNet peering allows you to combine virtual networks together and allow them to act as one. Or you can use VPN gateway to do so. While there are benefits and drawbacks of using one or another, it is a little bit too advanced topic for Azure fundamentals. For now, just remember you have two options and those are VNet peering and VPN gateway. So let me summarize. Azure Virtual Networks is an emulation of a physical network infrastructure in the cloud. And it is designed to allow customers for isolation and segmentation of their network to enable communication filtering and routing between Azure and on-premise resources. Remember that virtual networks are scoped to a single region. So in multi-region architecture, you will have multiple virtual networks, which you can connect to each other using either VNet peering or VPN gateway. And when it comes to segmentation part, you can achieve that using subnets. And subnets allow customers to divide virtual networks so that they can better and more effectively manage their IP address allocation, but also manage network filtering through something called network security groups or application security groups. We will learn more about those in the future video about security and compliance, but for today, Imagine you have two virtual machines within a single virtual network placed in two separate subnets. If you want to control the traffic that comes from the internet to that virtual machine, you can place a network security group on that subnet. And those security groups will only allow specific traffic to reach that virtual machine. You can also use network security groups to manage the traffic across subnets. It is really a tool for you to manage your networking in a secure and efficient manner. But we'll get back to that in future episode. Let me now move to Azure Portal, where I will show you how to create virtual network. As usual, you go to the left-hand side menu, you select create a resource and type in virtual network. This will allow you to create a virtual network infrastructure in Azure. Just hit create and fill in the form. In order to create virtual network, you need to select resource group, for instance, AZ900 networking, Provide a name like AM Demo VNet. Next, we need to select Azure region. As I mentioned, this is a single region resource. So for me, this will be West Europe. 
Now go to the next tab called IP addresses where you can allocate address space for your virtual network. If you leave it as default, it will allocate 65,000 addresses for you to use. And at the bottom, you have a default subnet. Default subnet is a requirement for every Azure virtual network. This is the place where you can allocate part of your address space. If you're done, move to the next section. Go to the security, where you can enable some additional security features for your virtual network, like Azure Firewall, DDoS Protection, or Bastion Host. If you're satisfied with your selection, simply hit Review and Create, and Create. It only takes about 10-15 seconds for a virtual network to be created. Once created, you can hit Go to the resource to review your virtual network. This is the place where you will manage everything about that virtual network. But I want to show you something more interesting by going to the resource groups and selecting the resource group that I created in the previous episode called AZ900VM, where I created my virtual machine. When you create a virtual machine by default, a virtual machine is created with a virtual network with a default setting. When you open this, there's a cool feature of virtual networks that allows you to draw a diagram of your infrastructure. By simply typing diagram here, you can select monitoring diagram and Azure will draw a diagram for you representing your current networking infrastructure for that specific virtual network. As you see, we have AZ900 VM virtual network with one subnet called default. And there is one network interface that is connected directly to the subnet, which is used by a virtual machine called AMDemo VM. There is also a public IP connected to this networking interface, allowing me to connect to this virtual machine from the public internet. And the network security group, which controls all the traffic that goes to this virtual machine through this networking interface. This diagram not only allows you very easily to see how your networking is organized within this virtual network, but it also allows you to quickly find related resources. For instance, if I would want to manage security rules for this virtual machine, I can simply now click on this network security group to do so. And all those components that you have seen on the diagram are used to manage everything related to networking to this virtual machine. But that's it for now. Let me move back to the presentation. I've also mentioned something called virtual network gateway, also called VPN gateway. VPN gateway allows you to connect to your on-premise environments so you can enable your virtual network to talk to the network within your on-premise environments. This communication is done over the public internet, but it is entirely encrypted. Additionally, VPN gateway can be also used to connect virtual networks to each other. Although this is a less common case, it is still able to do that. So just remember to use VPN gateway whenever you need to connect on-premise environments to Azure over the public internet. Or if you need to implement cross-regional communications of Azure virtual networks. In the end, it will be your decision to decide whenever you will want to use VNet Peering or VPN Gateway to do so, but there will be few details that you will need to read about before deciding which one to use, because each is designed for specific use case. For today, we don't have to deep dive into those topics. Next on our list is Azure Load Balancer. And load balancing simply means distribution of the traffic across multiple resources. So if you have two virtual machines, you can create a load balancer in front and evenly distribute the traffic across those two virtual machines. And there are many reasons to do that. One of them is scalability, because by adding additional instances, scaling out, you can scale to accommodate much larger workloads versus scaling up where you simply add more power to the machine. And the second reason is high availability. So if those virtual machines would be a premium SSD virtual machines, by default from Microsoft, you will get three nines of SLA. That means each virtual machine is guaranteed to run for 99.9% .9 of the time. But if you put those virtual machines into separate availability zones and put that in front of the load balancer, then Microsoft guarantees you already four nines of SLA. In which case you increase SLA and availability for your application by 10 times. This is because Load Balancer automatically checks the health of the application components that it's connected to. So if one of the virtual machines will stop from working, it will automatically redirect the traffic to the second one. And the chance for both of them to stop running 
is significantly lower than with one virtual machine. And when you build larger solutions, you will also separate your application components into tiers. For instance, by separating all the components that are handling web traffic into web tier, and possibly second tier handling all the data management for the application, having its own balancer to manage internal traffic. In this case, you would have two load balancers, one with public IP allowing for public internet traffic to come in. That's why this one would be called public load balancer. And one without a public IP, with just a private IP, allowing only the private connectivity between the web tier and data tier. This one would be called internal load balancer. To summarize, Azure Load Balancer allows for even traffic distribution across Azure components, and it supports both inbound and outbound scenarios, so both incoming and outgoing traffic. And it is used by customers to provide highly available, but also highly scalable applications. It supports both TCP and UDP applications and supports both internal and external traffic with this public and internal load balancer. But Azure Load Balancer is not the only traffic distribution service in Azure. The next one is Application Gateway. If we are talking about traffic distribution for resources, if that traffic is a web traffic, so HTTP traffic, you usually will want to replace a load balancer with Application Gateway. This is because Application Gateway is still a traffic distribution service, but it is designed to support web traffic. So simply it has more features that allow customers to better manage their web traffic. Let me just stop here for a second and mention that while I'm using virtual machines in pretty much every example here, services like app services can also be used. So those services allow you to redirect traffic to any public IP or address. You are not limited to virtual machines when building scalable distributed applications. So in case of building multi-tier application like previously, you would replace that public load balancer with application gateway. To summarize, application gateway is your web traffic load balancer in Azure with some features like web application firewall allowing you to scan for all the incoming traffic, redirection capabilities, session affinity when you want to be sure that your users are always directed to the same servers, URL routing, or SSL termination, which allows customers to decrypt the traffic on the application gateway and send unencrypted version to the backend services to reduce the processing power required to decrypt every single request going to the backend, increasing even more the scalability of your solution. But for the fundamentals exam, you don't have to remember every single feature of application gateway. Just remember, this is a load balancer that is designed to help you with distribution of web-based traffic. And our last service for today is a content delivery network, in short, CDN. CDN is one of those networking services that helps customers to build their applications. So let's take a web application as an example. Every web application has some static content, like JavaScript files, style sheets, static pages, or images. Normally, if developers don't know about the existence of services like Content Delivery Network, what they will do is bundle this application and put it into App Service and host that App Service in one of the Azure regions around the world, for instance, in West US. So when the user from Alaska tries to connect to our web application, his request will have to go through 1,600 miles to get this page and all of the content. So if our web page has 50 elements on it, that user has to make 50 requests, 50 separate requests with each having 100 milliseconds delay. This might not be an issue yet, but if our users will start connecting from different continents, in this case, the distance they need to cover is much greater. So the latency for every single request they make will be much greater when compared to users connecting from Alaska. To help with that scenario, you ask your developers to upload all the static content into Content Delivery Network allowing service to distribute that content all around the world so that the users will connect to the closest location with their content available, reducing the latency, but also the workload required by your front-end services. So Azure CDN allows for delivery of web content to users to minimize the latency for web applications so that you can build more scalable web applications and minimize the workload required by your front-end services.
And all that content is spread across multiple pop locations, so-called points of presence. Microsoft has over 120 locations available worldwide. So as you can imagine, this is more than Azure regions available. That means there might be points of presence closer to you than there are to the closest Azure region. But that's pretty much it when it comes to content delivery network. So let me summarize all of the networking services that we've learned today. First of all, we have Azure Virtual Networks. This is the service that allows us to represent our physical networking in the cloud and allow us to group, filter, and segment the network and all the related resources. Additionally, we've learned about VPN Gateway, a service that allows us to connect our on-premise networks with the cloud networks and allow them to communicate to each other. Additionally, the service allows us to also connect virtual networks in Azure. In this case, remember that VNet peering as a feature also allows for that. So definitely something to ponder on. We've also learned about two load balancing solutions. One called Azure Load Balancer, which is designed for non-web traffic or even distribution of that traffic across multiple services. And if our traffic is a web-based, then we use Application Gateway to distribute the traffic because it has additional features for filtering and security of web-based traffic. And lastly, we've learned about Content Delivery Network, in short, CDN. This is the service that distributes and caches the content across multiple pop locations around the world to offload our front-end services, but also reduce latency required to deliver the content to our users, which helps with scalability of our applications, but also gives us better user experience. Which brings us to our last slide. Remember about the materials available on my website? Check out the cheat sheets and practice tests. And that's it. And that's it when it comes to networking services in Azure. If you like this episode, hint thumbs up, leave a comment and subscribe to support the channel. If you want to go to the next episode, simply hit on the icon on the side or follow the playlist. And see you in the next episode.